gonna chop a pepper today. Come here. Chicken butt. I can't cook from the heart. Let me phone a friend. I don't wanna touch that type of meat. Essentials. I don't have time for this. I got books to read. <laughs> Smallest cabbage in all the land. <laughs> what are we gonna do with this lonely guy? Oh yeah. What's up, it's Jan back at it again with another nerdy bookish video. Welcome to episode three of Do Your Work. <laughs> you guys, I need this hype button. There's this thing, like, you know, the easy button, but it says hype on it instead of easy, and then it's like the boo, 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 boo. I need to go get it because that would be a lot easier than trying to insert sound effects and shit. Anyway, hello. This is episode three of Do Your Worst. If you are new here and don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I'll link the first two episodes down below where I read Kayla's and Gavin's worst books and see if I like them. This is basically an experiment video where I choose friends who have opposite tastes as me and I ask them what their worst books are and then I try them out, see if I love them because the idea, the goal, the objective, is that I find a new favorite among their worst books because of various reasons. Like maybe we always disagree on books or they disliked some of my all-time favorite books, etc, etc. In this case, first of all, merch plug. This is Black Aweenathon merch because this episode features Brie from Locked Booktician and her worst books. I don't know why I said featured. I guess she will be featured because I'm gonna play some voice messages that she sent me for a lot of reasons. The first episode for Kayla, I did a spinner wheel situation. For Gavin, I recreated his photos. Okay, so we're trying to do like one fun, challenging-ish thing for each of these vlogs. I don't know how long I'm gonna keep that up, but for Brie, I figured I would challenge myself to cook. <laughs> I say that with the utmost reluctance because I don't cook. Brie cooks in like every single one of her vlogs. Subscribe to her channel, by the way. She's great. Her personality, her humor, top tier. Her channel will be linked down below. She cooks in all her vlogs. So if you're looking for cooking and booking, go <laughs> check out Brie. I asked her to send me a couple easy, emphasis on easy recipes. She sent them via voice. I listened to like three out of the, I don't even know how many she sent, like eight voice messages. I listened to three of them to see what I'm signing up for here. I'm already nervous. So we're gonna listen to all of them together later on in the vlog, probably tomorrow, because tomorrow's my day off. It's currently Tuesday night and I have Wednesdays off, so I will be hopefully grocery shopping and cooking tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know how well that's gonna go. I'm gonna ask Joey to help me because he's the cook in this relationship. On to the books and the reasons why I chose Brie. Okay, first of all, wait, I have notes. I have notes, I have notes. I did my research today. I had no idea, but she DNF The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, which is my second favorite book of all time, right under A Dowry of Blood. And I had no idea she DNF'd it. She DNF'd it at 90%, okay? She's like, there was no plot, like blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that is an all vibes, barely any plot book. The writing, also stunning. But there's one thing we disagree on. She also five-starred fourth wing. This is the perfect opportunity to say that I have a fourth wing rant, spoiler-filled vlog, which I'll link down below. There have been plenty of times where we would reply to each other's stories and be like, hmm, hated that one to like each other's like four and five-star books. But we do have some agreements, okay? We agreed on All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby, which was actually my best book of last month. We also agreed on House of Hunger, which we both read for Kayla's Literally Dead book club and we guest hosted on that. So I'll link that live show down below because that was fun. We also agreed on Jackal by Aaron E. Adams, which we talked about for my book club and Brie also talked about it for Gabby's book troop book club. Oh, she also DNF'd Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney at 74%, which is one of my favorite thrillers. I'm gonna have to reread it because I don't remember too many specifics. I just remember how I felt after reading that book, but I do recommend that thriller off and when people ask me for thriller recs. Before this intro gets too long, I do have a set TBR. I have one that may or may not happen. So this morning, I actually already started The Guest List by Lucy Foley, which Brie gave one star. She didn't elaborate why on Storygraph, but I do have a voice message from her that I'll play later on. I am about 16% into it so far, but I'll go into it later when 
I do another update dedicated to this book. I also have Beneath the Sugar Sky by Sean and McGuire. This is the third book in the Wayward Children series. I read the first and second books via audio. I hated both of them. <laughs> well, the first one I gave like a low three, the second one I just hate and I said I would give up on it. And then a bunch of my patrons, Patreon link down below by the way, we're called the Lair, we're vampire themed. I would love to have you as a fellow vamp if you were so inclined to check it out and if the bloodlust is calling you at this very moment. Anyway, the, a bunch of them told me that I should read them physically. Like the audiobooks are not the way to go. So I already had it on my radar and then Brie was like, this is one of the books I hated. And I was like, oh, perfect. I can kill two birds with one stone. So we're gonna try physically. I got it from the library. So don't you worry, I did not spend money on it, but it's only 174 pages. So I'm hoping to finish it all tomorrow as well as Happiness Volume 1. This is my Kindle. Oh wait, no. I just brought this because I had my notes in here. I'm gonna be reading Happiness Volume 1. I don't know the author, I'm sorry, but it's a manga. I'm gonna be reading it through Hoopla on my phone. I hate reading on my phone, but I figured it'd be easier than trying to like put it on my Kindle. Whatever. Anyway, this, I don't know what she rated it because it wasn't on Storygraph. Oh, Beneath the Sugar Sky, she rated 2.75 in her vlog, but on Storygraph, it was at 2.5. The possible one, if I have time slash if I'm in the mood for it, I could start, oh, I'm too lazy to grab it. <laughs> it's up there. But I could start A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, which she gave two stars, but her review on Storygraph says otherwise. But again, I have a voice message for that if I end up picking it up. And that has been on my TBR for a very long time. I've had that box set. Christina gifted me that box set in like 2021. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that sounds right. I am making it a mission to read all of V.E. Schwab's backlist. So that would be grand. This was also on my 23 for 2023 and I didn't get to it. So it's been there for a while. It's been lurking. It's been on my shelves for a while, but it's just that I don't know if I'm in the mood for fantasy or in the mood to start a new series. So we'll see. See. But for sure those first three books. Oh, the reason I have my Kindle is to remind myself to talk about So Thirsty by Rachel Harrison. I asked Brie if she happened to read any Rachel Harrison and hated it, but she's only read Cackle and she found it okay. She didn't have any strong negative opinions about it. But I will say that I am reading So Thirsty. I got it as an arc from Tor Nightfire. I am 42% in, so that will be read maybe in this vlog as well, because I just want to talk about it in a vlog and it doesn't fit anywhere. So it's gonna be here. Sorry it's not thematic or whatever. It's a vampire story and Rachel Harrison's one of my favorite authors so I have to include it somewhere and I'm enjoying it so far. It started off slow but around 25% in, 30% it got better. But anyway I'm gonna go charge this battery. I have my book club discussion in like an hour. Hope you enjoy this vlog. I hope Brie likes this vlog. Okay bye. Listen. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Why did no one tell me that happiness the manga series is about vampires? Oh. Excuse me, what? Listen, Brie, you should have led with that. Then this would have been a guaranteed disagreement. That's the word. That's the word. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. I am currently 67 pages in, and I'm here for it. It's bloody. It's great. No one knows what's going on. I'm gonna try to finish this tonight, so then I can get up in the morning and update y'all if I don't look too gross when I wake up. Otherwise, I'll wait till I look presentable. That's my only reading update. Oh, no. Sorry. I got to apparently page 64 of the guest list via audio. Let me play the first voice note of the video from Brie herself. And she did give me permission to share these, okay? Audio. The guest list really just pissed me off. That could just be the tweet. I was like, why am I reading this shit? That didn't make no sense. It was given bootleg and then there were none. And I hate it. I can totally see that last part about it being bootleg and then there were none. If that's the case, I probably won't like this either because I read and then there were none back in college for a YA lit class actually and there was this whole debate as to whether or not it was YA and it was the whole thing. And I personally didn't think it was YA but it was in the curriculum. There are just so many retellings nowadays and not even retellings, maybe it's just like the way things are written or the way things play out. Even a couple movies I've seen that weren't pitched as and then there were none. I saw similarities and then there were like Easter eggs. It's just kind of annoying and overdone. I might have missed the mark with this one. I mean, nothing's gripping me so far. I don't even know if I like being in the wedding setting. I've read a couple books that were centered around weddings. It was all right, but I don't know. There's only so much you can do with a wedding party. You know what I mean? I knew this was one of those books that aren't timeless. I feel like if I read this when it was super hyped back in 
2020 then maybe i would have liked it because i read way less thrillers at that point and now that i have more thrillers under my belt i feel like this isn't gonna hit as hard so we'll see this might be an agree with brie you heard it here first folks <laughs> maybe not first i don't know if she has a vlog on this i tried to look i'm gonna start beneath the sugar sky tomorrow probably first thing tomorrow probably try to end this vlog in like two days to be honest with you why not why not take a crazy chance why not do a crazy dance you know this is perfect because i always break out in song and so does brie so like there's another brie-ish thing that i'm doing in this vlog i feel so like out of practice it feels so long ago since i've done the gavin vlog just so much happened in life as of late. The goal is to finish these three books like tomorrow since I have the time. Why not? It'll be fun. It'll be fine. The more I think about it, the more I don't want to jump into A Darker Shade of Magic and like rush it. I love V.E. Schwab too much to do that. Maybe another time, but I do want to start my cramming vlog very soon as well because it is April 23rd, so it's about time I start it, so that's why I picked like the quick, easier, shorter books from Bree's list. It's still going to be a good vlog. Tomorrow we're going to be productive we're gonna have some b-roll. We're gonna do laundry. It's gonna be great. Oh, also I forgot to mention my full moon book club live show was super fun Thank you, Tatiana. If you're watching this, thanks for joining me It was nice talking to her for the first time then I ate dinner then Joey and I got ice cream Just usual Jan and Joey things on a Tuesday night, you know? I know I said I'd update tomorrow, but I just finished Happiness Volume 1. I gave it four stars. I think I just found my next manga series because I've been looking for one after DNFing Tokyo Ghoul, and then I read Mermaid Saga, wasn't too huge of a fan of it, and I was gonna just like pause on manga for a while and or reread just a bunch of Junji Ito, but I think we found it, and we found the first success of this vlog, the first disagree, because I gave it four stars. I sat in Joey's chair. I just binged the rest of it. I loved it I mean there was this one character this female character who was really fucking annoying and just full of herself And that's why it's not five stars, but I am excited to continue with this series I don't know when I'm gonna do so I'm sure I'm gonna read at least volume two next month because I'm gonna read as many Asian authors as possible next month For my fun fact, I'm gonna do a fun fact about blood because obvious reasons I actually did not know this or did I that the word blood appears at least once in every play by Shakespeare. I feel like someone in high school has told me this, but I definitely forgot because as soon as I read that, I was kind of fascinated. There's your fun fact. If you're new here, I do fun facts for, if I remember, <laughs> for every book I read. It started with nature documentaries with Joey, and then now we're here talking about blood in Shakespeare plays. Tomorrow, we're gonna clean this place up a little bit, do some dishes, do some laundry, like I said, declutter a little bit, which means I'll have time for the guest list audiobook. That's the goal, and then then my physical reading is gonna be beneath the sugar sky. Maybe if I go to the gym, when I go to the gym, hopefully, then I'll bring So Thirsty, just cause I like reading on my Kindle when I do cardio. That's the tentative plan for now. I'm going to go shower and get ready for bed cause it's like 10.30 p.m. Okay, toodaloo! the gym it's like 8 45 sorry about the sliding it's okay you don't need to see me i look like shit anyway i woke up immediately read on my kindle i read five percent of so thirsty kind of nervous about it i might try to just like drag it out until this vlog is over so i don't have to talk about it too much but it's definitely not gonna be five stars is all i'm saying also did dishes at 7 fucking a.m because it stunk like a bitch and then i sat my ass down here and i started beneath the sugar sky oh while i did dishes i was listening to the guest list and i think my favorite character so far is hannah so there's that piece of information and then beneath the sugar sky i'm actually liking physically is the way 
way to go for the Wayward Children series, y'all. Like, truly, I should have just read it physically. Maybe I would have liked the first two books more if I read them physically. I have sprints in like an hour, so this is probably gonna be just like a 30 minute hit workout or something. Then I gotta make myself look presentable for sprinties. So hopefully on sprints, I can finish Beneath the Sugar Sky, do more productive shit. I'm trying to do laundry today too. That is all. I'm on sprints right now. My workout was great, thank you for asking. Reading Beneath the Sugar Sky. I should probably start my laundry soon. Sorry, my brain is everywhere today, but I literally just laughed out loud. <laughs> I am enjoying the fuck out of this. Reading it physically, it's crazy to me how different of an experience it is from the audiobooks. This girl was like, why do people always say there's only one way to find out? Like that's just laziness or like you don't wanna get called out for the fact that you don't want to think of other ways. There's always lots of ways to figure things out. That just made me laugh, but what made me laugh harder was was that they're like in the land of the dead. Like there's a bunch of dead bodies around, right? Or whatever. And she goes, why are you so happy? Everything here is dead people. <laughs> and that's like what people would ask me. And then he said, that's why I'm so happy. Everything here is dead people. Like, why is that so funny to me? That's all I wanted to share. I'm enjoying my time. I'm gonna go start my laundry before I forget once again. Also, this coffee I made, stellar, five stars. I would be up waiting for you if you had to leave. I have an update. I just finished Beneath the Sugar Sky. Yeah. Joey's ex's name. We don't, we don't. Well, we're not gonna say it's ill because of the book. It's ill because of your ex's name. Also, I think I burnt my forehead, <laughs> straightening my bangs. He burnt my shake. He burnt my shake. He burnt my shake. Anyway, I'm gonna give it three stars. It's still higher than Bree's. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me phone a friend <laughs> and get Bree herself to tell you her thoughts on Beneath the Sugar Sky. All right, so I'm gonna just come on here real quick. Book three is making me want to DNF the whole series. There's a character named Cora in book three. The author, I just realized, is reading these books. Ooh! Every time she speaks, it's like I'm hearing a chalkboard being scraped and I'm fighting for my life. I don't know if I can just DNF this one and go to book four. It's bad. And not the story is bad. It's the voice of this character. She about to make me throw them bowls. Like I get that the character is supposed to be annoying. I get it. But adding the annoying voice? Mm -mm. No man. All right, y'all. Book three, it wasn't a banger, but it was... Okay, I say 2.75. You know, follow the story of young Cora trying to, you know, find her mama. I wanted more action. Book two was such a high, and I just felt like this didn't even match half of that high. So. <laughs> oh my God, is that your way of uh, Yeah. Clever. So she has a dedicated vlog of like this. I don't know if she read the entire series up until the newest one, but she read multiple books in this series. And that's where that clip's from. But I also have a voice note. No, I don't. Not for this one. Never mind. I don't have a voice note. Sorry, I lied. We will be listening to voice notes though because Joey is home from work and we're about to go to Target, but we need to know what we're gonna buy. So we gotta listen to the recipes. My forehead is like throbbing. <laughs> I fucked up. First of all, I was like fighting sleep, okay? I was fighting falling asleep. That's why I was like trying to straighten my bangs for this clip. Oh, they look so bad. And I like totally forgot that a straightener is hot and I just like put it against my skin. I just, <laughs> but anyway, gave it three stars. Brie gave it two 2.75, 2.5, whatever. It's definitely better physically. I will say that. 
I do not recommend the audiobooks for these books. Reading this physically made me actually want to continue the series. It was really fun being in what's essentially candy land, okay? Everything was made out of candy. It was actually pretty fun to read about, but it was still kind of boring. Okay, so this is also one of those books that I feel like there's something deeper in there somewhere. I just don't have the energy to look for it. <laughs> I don't have the energy to think about it. I just know the writing has that type of style where it's like, okay, this is a metaphor for something. I just don't feel like figuring it out. I know a lot of, I think this whole series pretty much is like emphasizing the loss of innocence as you grow older. The first few pages talk about children versus adults and how they think of things. And when you're a child, like tornadoes are portals to another world. But when you're an adult, it's something destructive. So I really liked those first three pages of this book. I also really like how it's almost like a fairy tale for adults because one minute you're having fun, you know, jumping on cotton candy and all this shit. And then all of a sudden some dude is like, fuck me. <laughs> or this girl's like talking about how she's insecure about her vagina. And I'm where did this come from? So parts of it did make me laugh. It was fun. It's just, I was fighting to make this be four stars, okay? I was looking in every nook and cranny for a reason for me to give it one more star, but I could not find it. So maybe the next book, but this one's still a three. Now let's listen to recipes. That kind of rhymed. It did. <laughs> yeah. Is she doing her own video? Huh? Oh yeah, Bree's not doing her own video. I mean, I didn't ask her to. Boo. No. <laughs> Kayla and Gavin were not required to do a vlog, okay? That was just voluntary. All of my friends for future potential do your worst episodes, just so you know, no pressure to make your own vlog, okay? This is a collab in the indirect sense. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm gonna shift this over to Joseph and I together, and I'm gonna pull up Bree's recipes. Okay. Here I am once, once again, again, I'm torn into pieces. pieces. <laughs> okay, the first two I listened to, okay? So here we go. I get the volume up. For the first recipe, you're gonna go to Target and you're gonna buy the Andouille smoked chicken sausage. It's the Good and Gather brand. It has I need to write this now. Hold on, I need to write this now. I need a notebook and a pen. Wow. How do you spell that? A N D O U I L L. Huh? <laughs> a N. Good and Gather. Chicken sausage. Sausage. So, so. Parsley and red chili pepper flakes on the cover. You're going to also buy like red, orange, green, and yellow bell pepper. And you're also going to buy um, a medium sized sweet onion. What? Sweet yellow onion. Are you sure it said yellow onion? Yeah. I don't think she said yellow onion. Red onion. Medium sized sweet onion. Oh, just a oh, sweet onion. It's usually yellow. Okay. Next. After you buy all those things, you're going to go home, you're going to chop them all up. Chop them up into bite-sized pieces. I like to actually just make my pepper slices instead of chop. chopped. I like to do it slices, and I just chop up my meat. And then in a saucepan, you're going to put a little bit of olive oil in there. Listen, I don't like touching... I will handle it. No, then it's... It's okay. You don't have to actually do it. I'm going to do it. Not all of it. Mm. I'm gonna pay for it for sure. That I will allow. <laughs> Sauce pan. I don't, you don't need to. Olive oil. oil. Okay. And you're gonna saute it all until it's ready. Saute. And then you're going to uh, put some salt and pepper and some complete seasoning. Listen, she said saute it all until it's ready. What the fuck does that mean? I need specific times, stopping points. I need direction of stirring. You just know, okay? Until ready. Direction Brief. of stirring. Bree, this is not my. I need. I can't cook from the heart. I don't Listen, have that I'm shit. I'm here. Yet. This is why I'm here. Okay? I don't have that shit yet. I need specific play by play. Bree, Bree, Bree. You should know better, Bree. On it, and that's the first recipe. That's the first recipe. That's, that's it. What does that even. Oh, maybe we can make it with some like rice or something? Yeah, why not? Okay, okay. next. This is the one I, I've never heard this one yet. <gasps> the second recipe, you need more specific things. So if this one is too much for you, you don't have to do it. But it's a Probably recipe that I got from this Asian woman online, and it's just a really quick recipe for me to do. I have the stuff in my fridge right now, but I do it because it doesn't have any dairy in it, and I know that for a fact. So I go to like a store and shred it carrots, or shred, carrots. shred your own carrots, but I like to buy them pre made when I have a pinch of time. And then I buy the smallest cabbage I can find. Mm -hmm. Always the quickest. Smallest cabbage I can find. Is that a technical term? <laughs> smallest cabbage in all the land is what I'm writing down. Those bigger cabbages.
cabbages. It's just way too much cabbages. So I buy the smallest <laughs> cabbage I can find. Too much cabbage. And I also buy some mushrooms. Mushrooms. So I go home what and kind I cut of up mushrooms? everything. I kind of mince everything, including the cabbage. Mince. You want to have small pieces of cabbage. So you don't even... <laughs> just repeating cooking terms. Mince. <laughs> so I didn't know I got cut off, but you don't have to mince the cabbage, really. You just have, like, some small chopped pieces. So in a saucepan, you're going to go ahead and have it at medium heat. Put a little oil in the pan. You're going to put that shredded... Saucepan. Medium heat. Oh, well. Cabbage in there that you bought or shredded cabbage that you made. Sorry, you're going to put in the shredded carrots <laughs> into the pot. You're going to put in the chopped cabbage into the pot. And you're also going to put those chopped mushrooms, if that's what you decide to add to this. So you want to cook it in Probably not. Tender. You don't want to have really mushy <laughs> carrots. You don't want to have really mushy cabbage. You don't want nothing mushy. So just cook it until it's tender. Until it's tender. Yep, like a chicken. All right, let's go. How the fuck? While you're cooking it or before you start, like, really cooking it and before it's done. Hold on. You want to no mush. <laughs> Add just whatever amount you think is good for fish sauce. You want to add Korean red? No, not whatever amount you think is good. The fuck does that mean? Whatever amount we think is good for fish sauce. I have to steal some from my mom's cabinet. Whatever amount. This is very, Brie should write a cookbook. <laughs> Chili peppers, you want to add a little bit, I would say like Chili a- Chili peppers. Like a teaspoon of brown sugar. There we go, see that's what I need. I need teaspoon, T-S-P, brown well, lower sugar. Lowercase T. That yeah. is lowercase. A big T is a tablespoon. That's T-B-S-P. Yeah, that's it. P-S-3. If you want to add, well don't add anything else, I think those seasonings are pretty good on their own. So you want to cook that up and then you want to set it aside so that it can cool all the way down. You can put it in the fridge even if you want. Put it in a separate container so it can cool all the way down. You do not want this to be hot to do the next step. No hot. So the next step is if you have rice paper, those round ones that people use for spring rolls. Oh, oh make a spring roll. I've seen her make this in her vlog. Oh, but she has this little thing that she spins, like wet the whole thing until it's like flexible. And I don't have that. Okay. A spring roll paper. So you're going to put a little bit inside in the middle part of the spring roll that's already been wet, already been prepped. You're going to take a sheet. Let me start from the beginning. Take a sheet of one of the spring rolls. Thank you. Get it wet. Put it on like parchment paper or something just so it's something that it won't stick and you can't peel it off of. Put a little bit of that mixture once it's cooled down in the middle and fold it into a square. Then put it into another piece of rice paper and fold it into a square again. So then you're going to... I'm just going to watch her vlog. If you want to make this, I'm just going to pull up her vlog. Then you're going to put it into a pan and and you're going to fry it for like, I would say like a minute on each side. Sometimes you gotta do a little bit more than a minute. It's like one to three minutes, depending on how hot your stove, lit, your stove is on medium heat. But I like to do a minute I barely to know a how minute to use to the three stove. minutes, that kind of crispy texture. And I just eat them once I'm done frying them like that in the pan. You can use a little bit of olive oil to fry it in the pan. And that's what I do. So those are the two recipes I can give you. And they're pretty quick and easy. Are they though? That sounded hard and complicated. The first one is definitely the easiest. And we can make that with some white rice. Okay. Maybe we can even add some jalapeno. No. I don't like peppers in general. I'm not gonna eat any of those peppers. Don't they come in like packets of red, green, yellow? Yeah, I think so. I'm cool with chicken sausage though. Okay, well, we can't like not add things. What if we just buy the chicken sausage and I make skillets instead? Then what was the point of her telling all this? <laughs> I'm stressed. I don't know, what do you wanna do? Those are the only two she gave us? Mm -hmm. I think we should do this one because no mushroom. Wait, this one didn't have mushroom, did it? No, just chili pepper and onions. Hey, we're going healthy tonight. Let's do Wait, it. Why couldn't you give us something like really something fun? Fatty? I literally asked her for a pasta recipe. She's like, I don't make pasta. I'm like, great. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay, we'll we'll do the challenge. We'll do the first one because spring rolls are. All right, let's rip this out. And go to Target, baby. I'm gonna get tortured poets department. I'm gonna get some coffee, creamer, whipped cream, a dish sponge, and soap. A loofah. Cause hers completely unwrapped. Mine is literally like not even a loofah. It's a fucking slinky. It is a metaphor for her existence. Uh huh. Just unraveled. Yeah, we have a whole list. We're gonna come home with like two hundred dollars worth of stuff. Let's get it. Get it. Do I have to drive? I don't wanna drive. Yeah, fine. I guess I'll drive since you're buying. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, man. I just saw a fun, fun fact. Okay, I forgot to do, god, the sun is bright. Sun is doing its jobs. Okay, that's better. Hi. I forgot to do a fun fact about Beneath the Sugar Sky. Oh. Since I did sugar already in the past, I think I'm gonna say a fun fact on cotton candy because there was a lot of cotton candy in the book. The funnest of fun facts is that National Cotton Candy Day is December 7th. No way. That's his birthday. I don't even like cotton candy. <laughs> but also a thread of cotton candy is thinner than a human hair, which is kind of common sense if you think about it. But like just seeing it in a sentence is kind of weird, right? Do you know what they call it in the UK? Floss. Candy floss. Candy floss. floss. Yeah. The longest cotton candy was 1,400 meters long, which is the length of about 13 football fields. Jesus. 
Isn't that wild? That's a lot of cotton. Some wild facts. Okay, we're at Target now, so I'm gonna take y'all along on our endeavors. Hopefully there's not a lot of people. It looks like there's a lot of people, mm. but we're gonna get some fun grocery shopping it's moments. Be blessed. I hate grocery shopping, but for you, Brie, I will. But she won't do it for me. No, I wouldn't. Show you where I stand. Essentials. I want puffs. Look, he did it. Good job. They're playing TTPD. Okay, we're back with Hangry Joey. I fucking hate public hate people. He was so irritated at Target. I can't the cashier. You were irritated before irritated that. Irritated me. Stupid fucking hair. He was mad at me for going to get Taylor Swift. Oh, and then he was mad at me for asking that? him to reach my creamer for me. Well, I was trying to find a bag for the onion. <laughs> and her creamer was more important. It was! You needed an onion? Well, Bree said we didn't need an onion. Okay, we only got two peppers because we don't like peppers, but we're using them. I'm gonna learn how to chop a pepper today. This doesn't have casings on it, do Like the bratwurst? Yeah. Onion! Oh my god, we just watched a vampire movie. The girl was <laughs> like trying to find garlic and she brought a bag of onions. I'm like, that would be me. The cone! Because why not? Why not take crazy? Grocery haul because Brie does those. Got laundry detergent for $9.09. It used to be $12.99. Whoa, what a deal. Got a loofah, dish soap, and body wash. Gonna wash our grubby little fingers. We're gonna start cooking. I'm scared. I'm gonna poison us. I'm not doing this alone. Never sure you were. We enjoy our well being. You burn your forehead straightening your hair. I can only imagine what the fuck you're gonna do to this apartment. I would burn water if I had the chance. I've burnt pancakes before. Oh, that's not that hard to do. Aw, thanks. It's like a game. Yeah, great. It's a fun little game. I just put this in a different cabinet every time I wash it. We're gonna make this with rice. Oh yeah, our little addition is with white rice. It's a staple. It has to happen. We need a new measuring cup. What the fuck is that? There's no measure. Like they're all faded. <laughs> okay. Who's never done a drug in their life? Faded, faded, faded. Like, why is the detergent here? I am not touching the sausage. I can cut this. She said slices. Not chop. No, you can do it. She just does that way. I'd rather it chop. Okay. I'd rather small. Can you wash these? Can you wash my rice? Sure. Oh. Oh. As soon as I started recording again. We don't even have good knives, so I don't even know what we're gonna do. I need to tie my hair. Can I do a bun? Cumber bun? Come in your bun. Why would you say that? This is a family friendly channel. Fucking idiot. <laughs> okay, can I wash? That's yeah, too much water. I don't know, use your finger line. What is it? First knuckle. Okay, what does chopped mean? Is there a way I have to fucking hold it? I don't want to chop a pepper. No one's asking you to. I want to. Okay, got a knife. Is this the knife to use? This is a bit large ass knife. Yeah, that's the knife I'm making. Okay, how do I? Oh, how do I? I should watch Brie. Y'all. No, seriously, do I have to do it? Hold on, I'm trying to channel my cooking mama memories from my DS. Is it like this or like well, this? There's, well, there's like different ways to cut. You want to cut off the stem. I got it. Slice, don't fucking push it through. Uh, smells. Now what, chicken butt? Yeah, that's too complicated for me. I'm just gonna pretend. Cut. Go oh no, all the seeds. You can grow our own peppers. Oh, I, I thought I had to be high. <laughs> Here we are. We're cutting the peppers. Wow, I'm so freaking good. Okay, ready? Just slice. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. One more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm so good at this. Yeah, we're slicing. We're slicing. I thought we were chopping. We were going to. Please don't cut my fingers off. Really, you're in control. I don't know why you're uh, questioning me. I know. I'm really trying hard not to cut my fingers off. <laughs> Okay. Very professional recipe is right there. Chop that shit. Get it, get it, get it. Channel your inner Regina from A Million Little Things. <laughs> you are a chef. I am a chef. Whatever you do, don't touch your fucking eyes. Okay. You'll hurt. I mean, I would assume so. I should have looked for baked hot Cheetos. Damn it. How sharp is this knife? Sharp sure, enough to cut you. What, am I doing something wrong? Well, this part of the stem. No, maybe we'll give us superpowers or something. We'll be in the stem field. We'll be an engineer. <laughs> 
That's so stupid. Watch your fucking fingers, you're again. I'm watching it. Okay, this is tiring. I hate cooking. How do people do that? I don't know. I don't fuck around and find out. <laughs> Please. This is too much work. Like, I have to do this for a whole nother pepper. Brie, I don't have time for this. I got books to read. This is very riveting B-roll. Oh, look, that's a big one. Congratulations, you're an hour chef. Woohoo! My 2024 resolution. Check. And you putting olive oil in a pan isn't stereotypical? <laughs> Your Italian ass. I am gonna pretend I made this rice because I actually know how to do that. But there's the olive oil. Extra virgin, like me. Yeah. <laughs> We're Dyson, Dyson, like the vacuum. <laughs> I'm editing that out. Don't call me out like that. We're trying to be funny. We're like Brie. Brie's funny, so we, we gotta be on our top tier. What is this? Top notch humor. That? That's not a diced pepper. That is an entire pepper that you left in. Why'd your voice get so airy? Speak up. We still have an onion to do things with. Oh, we gotta cut the sausage. You should have left me with the peppers. I don't want to touch that type of meat. The skin and all? Ah, yes. Strip that onion. I'm just here for moral support. You know, I'm doing great. On another note, I ended up getting the bolter. I wanted the black dog because she looks iconic in that position. Position? In that pose. <laughs> Whoa. I like the bolter more than the black dog. And also this lyric on the back, it says, you don't get to tell me about sad. And that hits as opposed to whatever was on the back of the other one. But I liked that that was obviously a darker cover, but this is cool too. This is a vibe. It's not the 31 songs though, so that's unfortunate, but that's okay. Kind of like the first half better anyway, I think. Anyway, how are we doing on the onion, buckaroo? Oh my God, I've never really cut an onion. It really does make you cry. Oh, does it? Yeah, my eyes are burning right now. Someone told me like a life hack about it. Like I think yeah, you have to like keep to, like, your tongue somewhere. I think like, you're supposed to like chew gum. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Or something. <laughs> what happened to that? Pepper. We didn't, did you want the whole pepper on that? Mm, guess not. We're just wasting half a pepper. Yeah, we don't need that many onions. Okay, peppers are in the pan. <laughs> just cut, cut, cut. Food's done. <laughs> I did this though. I prepped them. And by prep, I mean take them out of the package and split them apart. But I'm not touching this shit. I can't. I can't. One day I'll get over. Holy shit. Aw, you're crying. Oh, fuck. Man, I've never really cut an onion before. This is wild. I thought it was just a myth. But I'm glad you're debunking this myth. At least you're wearing glasses. <sighs> wow. Cooking's exhausting. <laughs> she got a half a pepper. <laughs> like, cooking's exhausting. <laughs> it really hurts my arthritis, though. Oh holding God. a knife that tightly. Maybe I shouldn't grip it that tightly. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, I'm being assigned a task. What am I doing? Seasoning. We're gonna put some good old S and B from our little skull guys. How much do I put in? To my heart's content. Y'all gotta see. Y'all gotta see this magic. Is that enough? Tell me when to stop. Tell me when. Okay, enough of the salt. A little more pepper. Okay. We're gonna put some onion powder, because why the fuck not? <laughs> Care that stuff comes out quick. That's what he said. Keep going. Okay. We already have onions. Why don't we? Just keep going. And then some red Damn, pepper. okay, Gordon Ramsay. Some red pepper flakes. That's good. A little more. What is that thumping? I don't know. Wow. I'm trying to get rid of the headache. I'm so good. <laughs> I'm gonna do my sausage. Explicit content. Yeah, four sausages. What the fuck is that? Yeah, right? Our neighbor's walking. Doing the devil's dirty? Did you have a Jolly Rancher? Why is your tongue blue? I had a Jolly Rancher. Rancher. Your tongue is blue! I ate a Jolly Rancher. How did it get like that? I ate a Jolly Rancher. I don't even know why I'm cutting this up. Next task is opening these. Because my hands are slimy. Because he was playing with sausages. This is my meat. Do you want all of them at once? Yeah, give me all the meat. Yeah, that's the way to do it, you tough cookie. <laughs> you only need four? What Wait. are we going to do with this little guy? Oh, yeah, the bread is going to be too much. I can never have too much meat. That's okay. Yeah, fuck it. We're going to fuck the meat. Why is cooking so sexual? It is when you cook with me. Cooking with Joey. Wow, I'm glad I cleaned that sink. I know, don't worry. I should have worn a Vanna White dress. Why? Because I'm your lovely little assistant. Yeah, you are. I don't want it. I just wanted some validation. Alrighty. I have no idea if I'm even doing this correctly, so. It said saucepan, olive oil, saute until ready. Yeah, but I don't know if I should have cooked all the veggies first and then threw in the sausage or if I should. Probably. I don't know. Whatever. It'll look good. Alrighty, Rue. Moment of truth. I did this. I plated the rice. <laughs> Presentation, five stars. Ah, yes. It looks good. I love chicken sausage. Huh? Sure. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Okay, here we go. Truth. Tink. 
with the rice. Gorgeous. That's oh, good. that's spicy. Ooh, fuck me, this is good. You don't even notice the peppers and shit. This is good, Brie. Good job, Brie. Good job, me. This might be a... A regular. Regular, absolutely. Hell yeah. Thanks for expanding our horizons because we've been getting sick of our I cycle of I have groceries. no idea what... I need new things to cook. If anybody else has suggestions for me to cook. Drop your HelloFresh recipes because <laughs> we're, we're too poor. Shoot me a message on Instagram or some shit. Don't open that can of worms. No, Trust yeah, me. don't do that. <laughs> I don't like you guys that much. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi, I'm here to end the vlog. I know it was kind of short, but hopefully yesterday's cooking clips make up for it because those are semi-entertaining, right? You know what else is entertaining? Not this book, because I gave it one star. I gave it one fucking star, you guys. One star. I didn't think it was going to be five stars, but I didn't think I would hate it. Maybe in 2020, or maybe if I weren't a person who has a bunch of thrillers under their belt. If I didn't read too many thrillers, if I'm just like a beginner thriller reader, or if I just usually don't at all, then maybe the this would have been good but this was literally dead of winter by darcy coates but make it way less interesting characters way less distinct characters at least in dead of winter there was a variety of different characters you know like they had their distinct personalities they had their own little like backstories they were all like different builds and careers and whatever the fuck these were all just pretentious white people who like i mean one was an actor or something they were all just like boring they were all so one dimensional. Like, what do I know about each one? Okay, Will was an actor. Hannah was a mom of two, and she was dealing with her husband being the bride's ex, but now they're best friends. And then the husband, his only personality trait was being the bride's ex. The bride, who was the bride? Jules? Yeah, don't know anything about her. And then there was the wedding planner, who was, you know, a wedding planner. And I was just like, I think I have a newfound ick. I think weddings in books are just not my thing. I think the last time I enjoyed a wedding in a book was fucking Save the Date by Morgan Matson when I read it in like early college or late high school. I can't remember. That was also when I read only contemporary books. But now, weddings are just like, there's only so much you can do with a wedding that's not stupid. Like, I didn't really like In a Dark Dark Wood. Four Aunties and a Wedding was mediocre as well. God, I have the partner plot from the library. But that should be like kind of fun, right? Because I think it's like a Vegas wedding. I don't know. We'll see. We'll keep testing it but this was not it i did like the paris apartment so i had some semblance of hope for this one but just knowing that it was another and then there were none retelling i was just already over it there you go there's an agreement with brie so basically i had two wait what else did i read in this vlog oh beneath the sugar sky so that was like slightly better than brie's rating so i guess we'll call that a disagree slight disagree not a full disagree because i gave it a three and then happiness volume one I don't know Bree's rating, but I gave it a four, and at least I found a new manga series to start. So there's some sort of success for my end in this vlog, and a success for Bree and I's, I don't know, things in common, because <laughs> this was awful. I am so glad I can finally unhaul this, because good thing I, also, I didn't pay money for this, because I got this from my old library. It was a library discard, like they were getting rid of it, and employees could take from there and whatever, and I just took the library covering off. Off, and I finally got to it and I'm officially unhauling it because fuck that. In terms of the other books I read in this vlog, I am 50% through So Thirsty, so I will be finishing that probably right at the beginning of my cramming vlog, which I'm gonna start probably tomorrow because I'm pooped today and I have to edit. And then I also started the audiobook for Expiration Dates by Rebecca Searle, and it's such a quick audiobook. It's like a total of seven hours, and it's Julia Whalen, which, unpopular opinion, I don't really like like Julia Whalen. I don't really like her as a narrator. Like, I don't understand why she's so beloved. Like, everyone's just obsessed with her voice. And like, it's not bad. It's not annoying. It's not cringy. It's not unpleasant to listen to. It's just not my favorite narrator. I don't know. That's just me though. But anyways, seven hour audiobook. So in 2.25 speed, I'll be done with it very soon. That book is about this woman who knows exactly how long she's gonna be with each guy that she meets or starts seeing. 
I'm just interested on as to how, how the story plays out, how she goes about each person, each relationship, whatever. So there's that. I'll have my final thoughts in my cramming vlog. I don't have a fun fact. Can you Google fun facts about wedding cakes? I'm busy right now. Okay, he's busy right now. Where's my phone? Pause. Okay, fun facts about wedding cakes. What is the world's largest wedding cake? I feel like I do that a lot though. How old is the oldest wedding cake? Why? What was the most expensive wedding cake? What cake has the longest shelf life? None of these are that intriguing. Pure white icing was first used on Queen Victoria's wedding cake. Wedding cakes used to be pies until the 19th century. A wedding pie? A wedding pie? I think the largest wedding cake is kind of the most interesting. Was assembled by chefs at Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino and weighed 15,032 pounds. 15,000? It was displayed at the New England Bridal Showcase. Why do you need a 15,000 pound cake? I'm just confused. Can you eat wedding cake after 10 years? Why the fuck would you do that? Do people really do that? Like freeze their wedding cake? 11 wedding cake facts to impress your guests. In Roman times, before cake became the standard, the bride and groom would get a loaf of barley bread that the groom would break over his bride's head to symbolize dominance and fertility. I think I knew that. <laughs> That's so fun. Why does that sound like mine? <laughs> All right, so that is that. Thank you, Brie, for working with me on this video, telling me the recipes and giving me the voice notes and all that jazz. Hope y'all enjoyed this episode of Do Your Worst. I'm already planning my next two, so we're gonna do this again. We're gonna keep this series going. Maybe this is a series that'll actually stick. I don't know about next year, but for the rest of this year, we're gonna try to make it stick. If you made it to the end of this video, let's put... <gasps> is there a cotton candy emoji? There's gotta be, right? Oh, just a candy emoji. Put a chicken to represent our chicken sausage. Or a chicken. A candy emoji or a chicken emoji to represent beneath the sugar sky and our chicken sausage that we made yesterday. That was delicious, by the way. Still thinking about it. We should make it again this weekend. What? We're gonna definitely be making that again. Like this weekend. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope y'all had a vampy day. Don't forget to do some self-care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.